We're on the floor of PDAC 2025, and we're with Chris Gibbs, all the way from Australia for American Rare Earths. How are you today? I'm doing great, thank you, Tracy. Pleasure to be here. Uh, Chris, I can't say enough nice things about what you've been doing since you became the CEO of American Rare Earths, starting with the relationship with BMO. A lot of the investment bankers are going, hey, how did American Rare Earths make that deal with BMO? Can you give us an update on your deal? Well, look, uh, BMO engineers and their folks have come and taken a look at our project and they've looked under the hood and they like what they see, Tracy. Um, and this is their words, not mine, but their words, they see this project you know, as a unicorn. And I see it as a unicorn too in that what we've got is the largest rare earth resource in the heart of the United States. And as you know, one of the biggest problems facing the US is where are we going to go and on shoot, yeah, where to find these critical minerals. And the critical minerals we've got are these magnetic rare earths. And so, yes, what we've got is this massive 2.63 billion tonne jork resource. And you know, the, the folks at BMO recognise the size, the potential, the strategic importance, and you know, obviously the location where this is. And you know, they're, uh, they're keen to partner with us to bring in that strategic partner so we can actually fast track and bring this project to fruition, which is what the United States really needs. Of course, there were so many home runs in that last answer. I'm not really sure which one I'm going to ask your next question with. So let's start with this one. Trump. Trump must be your absolute best friend. He is talking about rare earths, critical minerals every other day. Why should every investor and everybody out there be pulling up their sleeves and doing their due diligence to look at Hallett Creek? with American rare earths? Well, for number one, for Hallett Creek, it's all about location, 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 and you know, where we're located is in the heart of the United States. And as I said before, Tracy, one of the biggest problems facing the United States, and you know, it's facing the current administration and previous administrations as well, is where to onshore these critical minerals. And what we've got is the largest resource you know, in the heart of the you know, United States. And so, you know, that's what we need to be focused on. We don't need Ukraine. We don't need you know, Greenland for these magnetic rare earths. They're right in the homeland, the heartland of a you know, outstanding mining jurisdiction of Wyoming. And so uh, that's, yeah, that's the opportunity. And that's, you know, and being in Wyoming, we are also on, you know, got a large portion of this project on state land. And so we're rapidly advancing that on state lands where we're not subject to all the federal permitting reform. And so our target to bring this into production is 2029. And we, don't, you know, we won't get embroiled in you know, 10 years plus of you know, federal permitting. And so great to be seeing federal permitting reform on the agenda, but we don't need federal permitting reform. So back to your, your question, Tracy, why should people invest is because number one, we've got one of the largest and our scoping study also you know, shows outstanding economics, but we've got a pathway and a true pathway to bring this into production you know, very quickly. Would you argue that American Rare Earths is really the leader for feedstock, for rare earth feedstock in the United States? Uh, that's def definitely the case. Yeah, we, we hear a lot about people looking at building processing facilities, like Linus are looking at building a processing facility but what we've got is we've got the resources in the ground and they're, yeah, they're homemade resources here in the United States. They're not in some other country or they're not out yeah, in Brazil or they're not in Australia or they're not in yeah, China. Um, they are here in the United States and that resource is in the ground. So that's the opportunity is to really yeah, process, yeah, bring that, not just the mining, but we're actually also going to be processing and producing metal oxides in the United States. And so homegrown rare earths in the United States. So speaking of in the United States, actually in Wyoming, and you've done an applaudable job at government relations. I mean, a very impressive. The $456 million Exxon loan, uh, and of course Wyoming. You're in the press every day in Wyoming. Can you please provide our audience with an update? Okay. We've got a great team on the ground in Wyoming, led by Joe Evers, who's our president of the business in Wyoming. 
and we've established, and it just hasn't happened overnight, we've been establishing our, our footprint and our relationships here for a, a number of years and, you know, and we've got outstanding you know, relationships with the state of Wyoming and you know, that is shown through as well that we've got state funding from the state of Wyoming and we're also working through right now our, you know, getting our state permits. Um, we've just recently received permits for what's called bulk test mining so that we can you know, bulk test mine for any of our pilot studies. But again, it's about building those relationships. And it's not just with the state of Wyoming, but it's also with our local communities and the local ranches and people there living in Wyoming. And you know, we see you know, this is a great opportunity, just not for American rare earths, but it's a generational opportunity for those folks in Wyoming. Well, for everybody out there that wants more information on American Rare Earths, they have an amazing website. Please go to the following URL. But furthermore, for those of us who may be shareholders already in American Rare Earths, what should we be looking forward to in the next quarter or two? Well, what we've got going forward, Tracy, is you know, obviously we're working with the folks at BMO in terms of uh, you know, bringing in that strategic partner to, so that we can rapidly advance this. But at the same time, we're moving this project forward on you know, on what we're doing within American Rare Earth. So right now our focus is a pre-feasibility study, which is due before the end of the year. We're also completing further metallurgical test work. Um, running parallel to this, we're doing our state permitting with the state you know, with regulatory authorities. And yeah, there, there's a lot going on. And uh, yeah, it, it's an exciting project. We recently came out with, again, you know, outstanding economics showing that a three million you know, tonne per annum case gives an NPV of at 557 million. If you double that, that's yeah, M MPV at 10 at yeah, 1.17 billion. But that's for a 3 million tonne case and a 6 million tonne case. But that is only 2.3% of the overall deposit that we've got at Hallett Creek. This thing is huge, Tracy, and it, it's ginormous. And so we're super excited what's coming for this year. So I uh, appreciate the opportunity to chat. So I think what you're basically saying is the U.S.'s answer to the, one of their critical mineral challenges, which of course is securing these rare earths, is actually already there in Wyoming. Is that correct? <laughs> the largest economy in the world with one of the largest problems and what we've got in the heart of Wyoming, an outstanding mining jurisdiction, is that we've got the largest rare earth deposit in the heart of the United States. And as I said, we don't need Greenland, we don't need Ukraine, it's right at home. Homegrown rare earths, and so yeah, that's, that's what we're excited about. Homegrown rare earths, again, thank you so much, Chris. It's great to see you. Hey, as always, thank you, Tracy.